Well, as you know, I mean, Brian was charged with uh, certain crimes relating to a credit card and some fraud issues. Um, you know, you, you generally can't prosecute a dead person, um, but, you know, there are some open chapters that, that need to be closed, and those discussions will remain to be had um, in, the, in the coming days and weeks. That clip that you just saw was of attorney Stephen Bertolino back in October, and he represents the parents of Brian Laundrie, the sole perpetrator in the van life vlogger homicide of Gabby Petito. Now, if you don't recall, Petito embarked on a cross-country road trip with Laundrie, her then fiance, back in July of last year. And after failing to return, her body was discovered just over two months later in Wyoming, strangled to death. Just over a month after Petito's body was found, Laundrie's remains were found in a park near his Florida home, and his death was deemed a suicide. Earlier this year, the FBI concluded that Laundrie was responsible for Petito's death, and Petito's parents have since filed a lawsuit against Laundrie's parents on the grounds of intentional infliction of emotional distress, claiming that the Laundries knew their son was responsible for the murder and did not speak up. Now, we're expected to go live today at around 1.30 p.m. Eastern time for a defense motion to dismiss the case. And if it is denied, the process to head towards trial will begin. So we want to bring in our guests to discuss this upcoming hearing and the overall case. Now, Karen, um, I'll mention to you that Stephen Bertolino, the, again, the attorney representing the Laundries, has said that this uh, lawsuit is baseless, that the allegations in this lawsuit are baseless. Uh, in the argument that he filed for the motion to dismiss, he claims that uh, the Laundries argued their choice to remain silent during Petito's disappearance is what most people would and should do. Do you agree? Well, from a, uh, an attorney perspective, right, in terms of protecting your client, absolutely. I think that it's not what the public wants. The public feels that if you have done nothing, you don't, you haven't done anything wrong, that you would be encouraged or you would want to speak to the police and, and solve this case, right? Because she was missing for, uh, Gabby was missing for quite some time. So it's contrary to what the public expects of you, but as an attorney trying to protect your client, absolutely. I think that that was the right thing to do, but that's against uh, public opinion. But let's reverse it here too. Okay, let's reverse it here, Janine, because Gabby's parents are saying that the laundries not only knew their son was a murderer, not only that he killed uh, Gabby, but they didn't act up, they didn't speak up, they actually might have helped him to uh, flee the country. And in fact, they also claim that um, they blocked, uh, I believe, Ms. Schmidt on the, her phone and Facebook page. So they blocked her on social media. Again, do they have a strong case for intentional infliction of emotional distress? So I'm with Karen on this. I, in a legal standpoint, I don't think that the parents had to talk, but from a moral standpoint, I just, I don't know how one mother to another mother couldn't, you know, communicate with her. You know, she's texting her. She can't get a hold of her daughter. I understand that you want to protect your son, but I think that there's a special place in hell for these people for what they let these parents go through. That being said, I don't know how successful of a case this intentional infliction of emotional distress will be. I'm waiting to see, you know, um, if it is in fact dismissed today, because I do think that they had a constitutional right not to speak. But at the very least, Karen, do you think there's enough to go to a trial? Do you think it's going to survive the motion to dismiss stage? I think that there's going to be pressure on the judge in this particular case that uh, all eyes are going to be looking at him. And if he dismisses the case at at the request of the defense, I think that he's going to get, he or she is going to get a lot of heat from it. So I'm hoping that public opinion is not going to sway his decision. But based on the information that we have, and maybe there's additional information that Gabby's family has that's going to be brought up at this motion, but I don't believe that there's enough uh, to move forward. You're referring to Judge Hunter W. Carroll, who uh, will hear this motion and actually has allowed cameras to uh, view the hearing as well, which is what we're going to do. So, Janine, how much, if this trial does progress and we go to an actual jury trial, there's so many things we don't know about this case. How much is going to be revealed? Well, if it actually goes to trial. And so I, I want to go back to something that the, Lan the Landry's uh, attorney said, because, you know, they, they've submitted the uh, the, uh, Gabby's parents have submitted their witness list, the you know, initial one. Yep. And it's, he said it's, it's, it's a wish list because it almost is like they're putting everybody in there to get the information that would then support their complaint. Their complaint isn't pled that great. And so, again, I hope public policy doesn't play a role with the judge today. But, you know, having watched this case myself, I hope it goes to trial. I'm sure, you know, there's a lot of people that want answers and want there to be accountability. 
you know, these parents, these parents went through hell. The whole country was in hell watching this, you know, unfold and, and it was just really awful. And so everybody kind of wants this sense of justice. Whether that will happen or not, we'll find out today. Yeah, and you mentioned, I'm looking at the witness list now. Obviously, it's the parents, it's the step parents, but also it's representatives of the FBI and representatives of the Northport Police Department, names not specified for both categories. So, you know, it is interesting to see who would testify and how this, this trial and story would ultimately play out.